meeting is being broadcast by Milford TV. If anyone would like a copy of the broadcast, please contact a member of the school committee or the administration. Our first order of business tonight is the approval of minutes, and we, we have two minutes to approve, two um, minutes, the first from September 28th, 2017, and I believe Mike and John were not at this mm -hmm. session. So uh, do I have a motion? Sure. One second. Um, reviewing the minutes, I noticed um, on that in the subcommittee updates, member appointed to sub uh, to the budget subcommittee. They had me down as Joe Callie. I believe it was Jim who was added to that. Is that the September 28th? Or the, the 28th, um, yes. The 28th, okay. Number 11, part So we'll amend, amend that to add uh, yeah. Jim. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna actually say the same thing, okay. but okay. <laughs> So do I have a motion to accept the, meetings from <laughs> the meeting minutes from September 28th with that amendment? Motion from Jim, seconded by Joe. All in favor, so we have uh, four or five in favor and two abstentions. All right, and the second uh, meeting minutes were from the October 5th <coughs> regular meeting. Um, I believe, uh, John, you were the only one not at that meeting, right? Uh, so we have a motion to approve the meeting, from, meeting minutes from October 5th, motion from Mike, seconded by Jim. We have six in favor and one abstention. All right. Next order of business is announcements, correspondence, and distributions. Do any members have any announcements correspond or correspondence? Mr. Chairman, that's all right. Uh, two things. I actually just want to um, want to uh, congratulate everyone on a very successful homecoming this past Friday. Uh, and even e even uh, equally as exciting, a, a win by the Milford, by the, uh, Milford Scout Hawk football team. Uh, very successful event, so congratulations and, and great job to everyone involved there. Um, also want to congratulate the uh, Milford High School cheerleading uh, squad, they hosted their uh, their annual cheer competition here at Milford High School this past Sunday. Uh, very, very well attended. The place was absolutely packed. Uh, had an opportunity to uh, attend that as well. Um, certainly a very, very professional event. It was unbelievable. As I, if, it, if you've never had an opportunity to go and witness it, it's amazing to see what, how talented all of these students are from across the different schools and all the different districts. So congratulations to, uh, to everyone on that event as well. Scott. Any other announcements or correspondence? No. Kevin? So I've got, I've got two, uh, Mr. Chairman. On October 27th at 7 p.m. in the Teacher Resource Center, where we are right now, our colleagues from the Council on International Education Exchange will join us to share information about scholarships available to our students who are interested in a study abroad experience in the summer of 2019. Scholarships are awarded on the basis of merit and financial aid. And if you have um, a student in Milford High School and have any interest in studying abroad, this could be a good presentation to attend. Secondly, also at Milford High School, on November 1st at 6.30 p.m. in the auditorium, uh, the Massachusetts Educational Financing Authority, or MIFA, will share a presentation on financing a college education. And this is open to families in all the Milford Public Schools. Um, and past MIFA presentations, many families have shared that they wish they had learned this information when their children were in elementary schools rather than high school. So I encourage any um, parent or guardian of a Milford student to potentially attend this event on November 1st in the Milford High School Auditorium at 6.30 p.m. Great. Thank Mr. Chairman, real quick, Thanks. I'm sorry, November 1st at 6.30, and what was 10, October 27th? That's uh, the Council on International Education Exchange. So those are uh, 7 p.m. right in here. On October 27th. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Greg. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in closing your packet, you have a letter from the DESC uh, regarding <laughs> MCAS. MCAS results were released yesterday. Um, Kevin and I will have a full presentation for you next meeting, uh, but I wanted you to be aware that um, the parent letters will be coming next week in the mail. Um, so we'll get them out to, to families either next week or the week after, and then we'll work with principals to, to figure out how we can have some forums so parents can understand how to how to look at the results. Okay. Right. And so n next week you're going to review the results. Are you also going to review the the changes to the accountability yeah. standards as well yeah. as part of that? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And th th those changes apply to this year, right, or they start next year? The the way that accountability works, uh, and again, we'll, we'll go over it again next week, but um, it's very, the way it was done this year is very similar to the way it has been done in the past, meaning it's looking at results, achievement scores, and that's it. Okay. okay. Um, I know um, there's been some 
some things written in the papers and, and in the media about different ways that accountability is going to be structured. Um, that's not finalized at all for for years after this year. Okay. So, I mean, we can start a discussion about it, but it's definitely not finalized. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll cover that at the next meeting. All right. Any other announcements or correspondence? No. Great. Uh, next order of business is invitation to speak. Would anyone like to address the board today? No. And next agenda item is the Milford Theater Workshop recognition. Would you like to come up? <laughs> Thanks for coming tonight. Oh, thank Appreciate you it. <laughs> I was going to say, you're not getting stage fright here. Should I introduce Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be oh, great. That'd be great. So thank you so much for having us. Um, we're representing the Milford High School Theater Workshop. Um, we have Alot Tabak, who is the president of the workshop this year, also one of the producers. And she is also playing the Red Queen in our fall production of Alice in Wonderland. Uh, we have Andrea Reyes, who is the stage manager, which means she's in charge of the backstage crew. So she helps supervise all the building of the sets and hmm. um, props and all that. And she'll be the one running things backstage during the show. So we rely on her a lot. And we have John Probert, who is the secretary of the workshop. He is also playing the Duchess in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, he's doing and we also have Julian <coughs> Kelly, who is the assistant producer, and she is playing Alice in Alice in Wonderland. So we've got many of the stars of the theater <laughs> workshop <laughs> here for you. And I'm um, Maggie Gerard, if you don't know me, and I'm the advisor for the theater workshop. So thank you again so much for having us. Okay, thanks for coming in. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So thank you guys for, so much for coming in. and, and um, and you know, coming in and talking to us a little bit this evening. A couple of things. One, um, we'll give you guys the opportunity if, with Mr. Chairman if you'll indulge to, so you got ticket sales that are coming up, right? Yes, you have an event absolutely. Coming up. So here's your plug. Yay! Right? So you have an opportunity to, you know, plug your, plug your, plug your show up that's come upcoming. So if you want to give us some dates when tickets go on sale, how people can get them. Absolutely. Talk a little bit about the show if you could. That'd be sure. great. Sure. Yeah. Um, so the show is going to be, um, opening night is Friday, November 17th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, November 18th at 7 p.m. And then we have a Sunday matinee on the 19th at 2 p.m. And um, tickets go on sale the week before the show. We, we sell them uh, at lunch, but they'll also be available at the door at the show. And um, usually, you know, there's no problem getting them at the door either. But you can also, they could contact me at the school ahead of time if anyone's interested um, in making sure they have them um, before. We also can have a, a will call list at the door, so they could email me, M. Gerard. G I R O U A R D at milfordma.com if anyone's interested in doing that ahead of time. And I don't know, I could turn it over to, to all of you if you want to talk a bit about the show. It is Alice in Wonderland, so it's familiar, but I don't know, does anyone want to talk uh, about what we're doing? It's, uh, <laughs> Lewis, you get to the mic. Oh, oh mic. sure. Oh, should we be sitting Sorry. Sorry. Mic? Oh, I'll take sorry. a seat. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you just <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you just fine. It's the people at home that can't hear you. Sure. Uh, understood. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Alice in Wonderland. It's a Lewis C. Carroll's, like the based off more of the book, more so than the Disney film or the Tim Burton film. So there are some unfamiliar characters, perhaps for those who haven't read the book, like the Duchess, for example. You know, no one knows who that is, which is fine. <laughs> which is fine. It has a hilarious it's encounter. Hilarious with encounter with Alice. Yeah. It's <laughs> not in the not in the Disney movie or the Tim Burton, which is fine. Yeah. Um, unlike them, I'm not on the stage. I'm in <laughs> charge of pretty much coming up with the set designs and we build and we paint them and it's just a bunch of people who come together and we make a beautiful set for the cast to have because without cast there is no crew and without crew there is no cast. Mm -hmm. And our and our crew members design and build everything. So yes. everything you see on the stage the students mm -hmm. have produced. And again the the producers and the other students also help vote on the show so it's really um, very based on what the students would like to do each year, you know, with, with some input from, from me and the other advisors, but really they take the, the lead with just about everything. Our, uh, we were hoping our student director could be here tonight. The fall play uh, is directed by a student with 
with my help. That's Caitlin Tolpin. She's doing a wonderful job. So it's really in the hands of the students. So, so the productions that you see on stage um, really are all down to the, the effort and the talents of the students we have here at the school. You, get, you gave us the date at Milford High School? Yes, yes, it's in the auditorium here at the school. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maggie, how many total students are involved in the production? Um, it, it changes a bit, you know, for, for each semester, but I think we've got about 40-something kids in the cast and for crew. I think we have about, like, 60 students in the crew. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Did you say 60? Cool. Yeah, there's wow. a lot of us. We, we're, we build the sets and paint in the Shining Star area, so there's a lot of us just down there working hard and getting everything done mm -hmm. for Tech Week, which yeah. is fun. Right. Yeah, but we usually have higher numbers for the musicals. Yes. Sure. Yeah, more than that. So yeah. I would say we probably are at like a hundred plus kids for the musical uh -huh. in the spring, which will be Cinderella. So we're having a very magical fairy tale <laughs> year. <laughs> this year. Yeah. And uh, when did you guys do audition? And when did you start the process? When do you when do you start auditions? How the how what are just for those that maybe at home that aren't included in this or not familiar with this? How long do you rehearse? When did you start? When did you know? What's the total production time that goes into this? You let our producers talk about that. Um, okay, so we started. <laughs> so we ha we had auditions um, the second or third week into school. It's a very quick process. So you have auditions, and then the next day you find out if you get a call back um, to see if you would have a bigger role. And then it's usually the next day where you find out the cast list, and then you have a weekend to. You have a weekend, and then you start rehearsals, pretty much. And everyone who auditions gets in, no right. matter what. Yeah. No, so cuts. no cuts. No cuts. So <laughs> everyone, everyone's going to be involved. Which is a big change from how they do it at, say, middle school, where there are sometimes cuts. And yes. even um, if you audition for cast and you're not good enough air quotes for those <laughs> listening, um, you'll get put into crew, which uh, discourages some people from joining because they don't want to get put in crew, but they won't. They'll just get in cast. Yeah. But for us, anyone who New wants process. to be on stage is going to be on stage. Yes. Yeah, um, Room for everybody at NHSCW. Mm -hmm. Crew is more for the people who love theater but don't like being on stage. Yeah. <laughs> it's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we meet uh, Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 3 to 5. And we started the second week of school. We met on Monday, we had our meeting, and then the next day we just started off the bat. Mm -hmm. So it's very quick. We don't have enough time, so we have to fit it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a very smush schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and cast also rehearses three times a week. Yes. So it is a big time commitment from our students. So it's a real testament to the, the loyalty and the dedication that everyone has because most of our students are also involved in other activities, are generally pretty high achievers <laughs> academically as well. So it's, it's a big commitment all around for everybody involved. Especially when we get to tech week, which is then <laughs> craziness for the whole week, dress rehearsals and all that. And that's a uh, all night commitment for everybody. So everyone who does it just really loves it. Okay. Hard so work with a big payoff. Yes. <laughs> Any other <laughs> questions? questions? Yeah. I was just wondering what year you're all in and is what's kind of the makeup of the theater group? Is it mostly upperclassmen or a mix? It's a mix of all that's grades okay. for okay. sure. Um, Ayla, why don't you tell me? Um, I'm a senior. I'm a junior. I'm a senior. I'm also a senior. Yes. Yeah, the officers are upperclassmen, yeah. but we've got all grades represented in crew and cast. Hmm. Break a leg. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you all I get a chance to see one thing. thing. Um, you know, a lot of times we, it, it's so great to see the music and art group come in. Um, a lot of times we showcase athletics um, and I love to shine light on everything else that goes on in the school uh, and the district, but most, you know, in this case, at the high school, there's so much talent, um, and it, it's it's awesome to be able to showcase that when we can. And you guys put in so much time and so much work, so much energy, and the shows are amazing. So I just want to say thank you. It is recognized. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we <coughs> love hearing that, of course. <laughs> um, and especially since you mentioned we have the music and arts are so important, especially um, with the spring musical, we have, a, of course, a lot of overlap with our excellent music department, including students who play in the pit orchestra with professional musicians we've hired as well. And they're right up there on that level. Um, so yeah, in the pit, backstage, on stage, 
uh, at every level, the students are really heavily involved in it. Again, it's just a testament to the, the amount of talent and dedication we have at Milford High. You, Thank you. To that point, you, it's, it is amazing the shows that you guys put on. And, you, and, it's, and the Milford, Theater, Milford High School Theater Workshop has had quite a rich history. You've been around a long, long time. Uh, you have some, uh, and you've got some, actually some very famous alumni. You actually have a two-time Emmy Award-winning producer that's actually one of your alumni. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you were familiar, if you knew that or not. We've got some folks that are still on television and still in production today. So um, awesome. you've got some, you're following some pretty good footsteps. So congratulations to all Thank of you. you. I can't so wait to see the show. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. Thanks for coming in tonight. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. You guys. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Bye. All right. So we have the Eagle Scout recognition for the service project. Would you like to come up, Tyler? Sure. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Good. Thanks thank for you. coming in tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. So you, you worked <laughs> on the project here at Shining Star, right? Yes, I did. On the, the message yeah. board? Yep. Great. You want to tell us a little bit about the project? Um, yeah, sure. So um, closer towards the summer, uh, like two or three months ago, um, Miss uh, or the Shining Star came to... No, I was just motioning to your oh, dad. I'm, I'm sorry. I wanted him to get some good shots. So come on up here <laughs> so you can. I see you're trying to shoot from the back. Come and sit in my seat so you can get some good shots. Miss Masterson came to um, my uh, Boy Scout troop and offered to, um, or had a, an offer of somebody making a sign because they needed one. And um, I jumped on it and decided that I wanted to do it because I need to do an Eagle project to get my Eagle Scout. And so I did it. Um, my parents and I had a mentor in the troop who helped me. And um, it went pretty quickly and smoothly. Great. Yeah, it look, looks awesome. Uh, Thank you. You did a really good job with it. Thanks. Any questions for Tal? So I can say um, Dr. Masterson, who's the preschool director, was very pleased with the results of the project. And she's very happy because it just provides another opportunity for communication with parents as they're walking in and out. So. Dr. Masterson and the whole Shining Star staff are, are very pleased with the with the results of your project. Thank you. So I congratulations that. on that. I just echo that. Just congratulations, and you know, it's congratulations to you and to your family as well. It's you know, getting your Eagle Scout is is a is a tremendous accomplishment. Thank you, you put in a lot of work. It's obviously the visible piece we're here to recognize tonight, and certainly thank you for is that sign, and that's that's a sort of the tail end of a really quite a long journey for you getting your going working towards your Eagle Scout so mm -hmm. congratulations it's Thanks. it's a huge 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 accomplishment that you should be very very proud of and uh, just looking at the faces of mom and dad in the back they're already really <laughs> proud so <laughs> congratulations thank you I also wanted to echo um, everyone else's sentiments and thank you I think we talk a lot about this generation and um, Sometimes they tend to be a little self-centered. I'm raising two of them, I, so I know for <laughs> um, But I think one of the great things about Scouts and the Eagle um, honor especially is that community service piece. And um, certainly to see a high school junior doing something to benefit the youngest students in our school district um, is very impressive, so Thanks. thank you. Again, I want to say congratulations. I was talking about it today at work. <coughs> Five, six years ago, I was on the board of the Milford Cha Area Chamber of Commerce. And every year we give away, um, I should say, they give away a scholarship to a student. And I can remember one particular year we had 13 applicants and 12 of them were Eagle Scouts. Mm. And so going through the process of trying to pick the person that was going to get the scholarship, of course, we had to listen to what they had done for projects. And uh, they were pretty amazing. One was a, a young gentleman from Franklin who uh, was a senior at uh, the vocational school. His second grade teacher, second grade teacher called him up and said that somebody had donated land behind one of the elementary schools and she wanted to do like a outdoor science where she could take the children. But it was a hill and you had to be, she needed a way to get the children up the hill and into this area. And he single-handedly built steps with a landing all the way up, put flower boxes on the side. Just unbelievable, I saw the pictures. Another one was a young gentleman that reached out to a company and he collected, believe it, as crazy as this is, he collected women's purses, resold them, took the money, and was helping build a school for young girls in Ghana. 
and I that mean, was an Eagle project. Yeah, that's amazing. And and and, and the same as, as the chairman made reference to yours is that it's just it's amazing uh, when you see the commitment and the work that it takes to become an Eagle Scout, the maturity, the character, and if you look down the road at some of the people that ultimately do find success, whether it's in the military, whether it's in the corporate <coughs> world, um, you find in a lot of times, not only were they Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, they were also Eagle Scouts. Mm -hmm. So congratulations, your parents, and you should be very proud of yourself. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to say thank you. I mean, I, I'm not going to try to say what I, <laughs> what's been said so eloquently. I just want to say thank you for your time, your effort, your commitment. It's very much appreciated. You're welcome. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much for coming in, Tyler. Really appreciate it. And yep. uh, congratulations on your achievement. And thank you so much for the, the project. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, thank, you. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good well, night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for coming in. All right, so the next agenda item is the uh, first reading of the technology responsible use policy. Um, so are you gonna yeah, yeah that's fine. Right? Okay. Um, so we had an opportunity, Jen and I um, had an opportunity to sit down with, um, with the, um, our technology specialists and really kind of go through. This is really just, if you look, it's redlined for us. If you see the highlighted areas as you flip through, if you've, anyone has had, if we've all had an opportunity to read through, um, I'm not going to sit here and read to you guys, but just the redlined areas, the red highlighted areas are really just the changes and amendments that go along with this. Um, you know, really the focus is just as we go to one to one, um, more and more we continue to expand. We want to make sure we're continuing to remain current and up to date um, as as our as, along with all of our policies, but certainly with regards to this one um, as we go forward here. So just I'm not sure if there's any questions. Sorry, bless you. Uh, any questions or concerns, Jenny? If there's anything else you want to add on to that. No, I think it's it just keeping us up to date, given the status where we are, which yeah. is a great place to be. And I would expect that we'll we'll need to we'll need to expand and <laughs> probably make it further adjustments to this as we go forward, um, as we continue to expand. I d hopefully, if if town meeting goes well at the end of October, um, and we get the approval and we move forward with a one to one device, uh, expanded through grades 10, 11, and 12 into next year, we'll need to you know continue to review review and revise this. Um, the policy will. The policy seems to be moving, needing to be adjusted and moved almost as quickly as technology is advancing. Um, so it, I think it's something that we'll need to kind of keep pretty forward in our minds as we continue to review policies. Thank you. Open it up to some questions or comments. Did anyone have any feedback on the policy? Um, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. I mean, this is something that's going to evolve over time. I'm going to be continuing. Uh, continually making some tweaks here. Um, just some minor things that uh, on bullet number two on page 204, um, I think that language needs to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, again, very, very minor. It just said, yep. I think it says targeted and or cyber bullying using, so I don't know if, I don't know if that's the bullying it's use. Just the, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so just re really minor things. We'll um, it's prohibited and will be investigated following school and district policy. So again, just really minor. Will be. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's a slash after one that we'll take out too. Okay. Uh, but other than that, it looked, mm -hmm. it looked good. So this is the first reading, right? right. So we'll yep. have to come back for the second reading. Uh, we can. We don't have to. If the committee chose to adopt it after one reading, you certainly can. But if we want to make that, we'll, we can make these changes, come back, make that quick revision and, and make a motion and a vote, but you don't have to go through multiple readings. But yeah, let's can. um, let's do that because I think we do, I actually think we have a policy that says it won't be voted on for approval on the first reading. So yeah, it can be, that. it doesn't have right. to be, but yes. <laughs> um, so let, 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 just, we'll do that, we'll bring it right. back and then That's vote fine. on the next one. That's fine. We'll make those adjustments. Okay. Right. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Um, so NEASC accreditation? Yep. All right, so we're recommending moving away from NEAS accreditation at Brookside Memorial, Woodland, and Stacy, and maintaining the NEAS accreditation at Milford High School. It's unusual for a public school district to have all of their schools go through an accreditation process. <coughs> in fact, only 10 schools below the high school level in Massachusetts are engaging in the process, including our four Milford schools. So it's the four Milford schools and six additional schools across the state. 
Um, although our relationship with NIASC has always been very positive and very valuable, I feel that we receive feedback in a number of ways, including the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education's coordinated program review, annual MCAS and ACCESS scores, SAT and ACT scores, post-secondary plans, local assessments through our assessment grids, and the state tracks data in a variety of areas that we're following on a regular basis. Um, we also have limited time for professional development planning and data analysis with our teachers and would like to use that time in a focused way to support district and school improvement plans more robustly. I'm recommending that we continue our relationship with NEASC at the high school level and discontinue the relationship at the K-8 through level. Additionally, the preschool will maintain its relationship with NAEYC, which is the National Association for the Education of Young Children, which is their accrediting organization. <coughs> so preschools and high schools tend to be um, accredited. Our elementary and middle schools just generally tend not to be unless they're private schools. Open it up. Any questions or comments for Kevin? So um, I guess my question on this is, so we, um, we put in a lot of, there was a lot of effort, and I won't even say we, because we didn't. <laughs> uh, the teachers, the administrators, the staff, uh, the students for that yeah. matter as well, yeah. um, did an awful lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was certainly a very significant achievement mm -hmm. for all of our schools. Um, I believe we were actually the first school district in the state um, that went through and actually had every school um, accredited <laughs> through NEASC. Um, it was certainly a, a, a certainly a lot of work, certainly, but it was all it was also um, a pretty big feather in the cap of Milford from an accreditation perspective. From a um, you know things that we as we've been talking about as a board over the last several meetings of you know what are some of the things that we can point to um, that are impacting the education of our students. How are we measuring things? Um, so I just I've heard feedback on both sides of this case as far as do we stay in the ass, do we not stay in the ass? Uh, I certainly heard a lot about it as we were going through that process, um, as I know uh, other members that were here during that time went through it as well. Um, I, I guess my question is, is <coughs> why was it so important that we go through it a number of years ago, and what's changed that it's not as important to maintain it going forward at the elementary school level and the secondary and the middle school level? So I can't answer the question of why it was so important because it predated my affiliation with the district. Yep. But I would say, um, and, and, I'm, and I'm honestly not sure, I, I, I think like you said, I think it was, you know, we would be one of the few districts in the state to be, you know, accredited across the board. Um, I think there's a tremendous value at the high school level and it's common practice at the high school level. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it, 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 we're not NEASC, it's, um, the NAEYC at the preschool level, also common practice. Um, I think with a number of things on the plates of teachers, principals, um, I don't know with the limited time that we have that it's necessar we, we necessarily get the same value at the elementary level that we do at the high school level for the US. And I think there's a lot more, like I think nearly every public school in Massachusetts <coughs> in New England, and I won't say all, but a, a good percentage of them are accredited at the high school level. Mm -hmm. There's only six other elementary schools across the state, and there's probably 270 districts and probably you know, well over 1,000 elementary schools. So again, I think NEASC is a very valuable exercise. I don't know at this point with all the demands that are put on schools, principals, and teachers, and like you said, you know, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a lot of areas where we're working on a number of initiatives. Uh, Craig just did a, an exercise with our curriculum team leaders of the number of initiatives that are happening at each level. And I don't know if you want to speak to that just briefly. And one of the things we always talk about from kind of a administrative perspective is we always put more things on the plate. Mm -hmm. We can rarely take, we rarely take things off the plate for, mm -hmm. for folks. And I think this is an opportunity to We've added a lot on the plate in the last few years, and this is the, uh, an opportunity to take something off the plate that I don't think is going to have a qualitative impact on how we deliver our educational services here in Milford. Do you want to just throw in the, and I kept going on after I threw the questions up there. With. Um, so as far as what, what we did, actually it was yesterday, we did an inventory, um, an initiative inventory with all the CTLs just to get a feel for what, what CTLs teachers are, are looking at for initiatives. 
And when you come up with numbers like in the 30s, 40s, 80s in some schools, I think um, teachers are clearly feeling overwhelmed. Uh, and I, the point of the exercise was just to get a feel for what, what do teachers feel like we're working on versus what administrators think that the teachers are working on. So I, I, I'm guessing that if I asked the, the administrators to, to do the same exercise, their list wouldn't be as long. And some of the initiatives that the teachers are still working on are, you know, three, four, five, six, six years old, and administrators that think they're done. Um, so we just need to do a better job clarifying and, and clearing some of those misconceptions up. And, and this is really an opportunity, um, before you jump in, Mike, yeah. if you don't mind, this is an opportunity before we really jump into the meat of the next round, of, because we're kind of in a mid-cycle for the, I believe, the elementary and the middle school is definitely in the midst of it, um, before we really kind of put a tremendous amount of people hours into the process, um, we felt like this was maybe an opportunity to kind of, and again, we're not, we're not cutting our relationship with NIAS, we're just not <coughs> moving forward, with it. we would not be moving forward with the accreditation process at our elementary schools and our middle school, but we would continue that relationship at the high school level, which has been a very positive one. Mm -hmm. I, I guess the question that I would have for you, Kevin, and, and for Craig as well, is you, you've explained to us the disadvantages of having NEASC at the elementary school level. Mm -hmm. But as the administrators of the district, tell me what, are the, what do you two see as the advantages? Sure. Whenever, whenever you have um, like a peer-reviewed third-party mm -hmm. process, you always get some nice feedback um, as part of that process. So I think that's a, that's a clear advantage. Um, the NIESC is a well-developed organization that um, has been around for a very long time and you know, has, a, has a fair amount of expertise, and we do take advantage of that expertise on a number of different levels. Um, so that would be, like, and there's, there's multiple advantages to NIESC. I think um, based on everything else that I think teachers and administrators have to do, though, I, I, I wonder if we're getting the value at the K level. Um, from from the pro from a process perspective, we definitely get it at the high school perspective. I don't know if we're seeing that same that same value based on all the other commitments where we have to engage in. And, and if I could just add to that, when they come out, they come out for four days and they look at all the materials that you you produced. But I guess what 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 we found through the process is it takes two or three years to collect all those materials and every single second of, of time that's not teaching is dedicated to collecting and writing reports and, and doing all these reporting things. And in the meantime, the, that list of 80 initiatives just keeps getting bigger because it's in, it's in just stall mode. It's paused. Nobody can do anything with that. Yeah. So, so I, I guess my next question to you is that do you feel that um, do you feel by not using the ask at the elementary level, you'll free up the time for administrators, for teachers, to in other areas move the district forward? Other areas, a absolutely, and that's why we're making the proposal because we're looking at you know providing more time for teachers. Because one of the things we're always fighting for it's the one variable we can't control is time. We're we're, we're fighting for you know continuing continu continuing to develop those curriculum maps common assessments, and then the analysis connected to the common assessments, and that's what drives changes in curriculum, which leads to district improvement. And that's where the focus would be. So you, you strongly feel that, that your plan is, is, is better than, better time spent than, than NEASC in the elementary school? Yes, and, and I, I want to be very clear that NEASC is a, like, like, and I think it was a great question, Mike, NEASC is a very valuable process. I don't want to make it seem like it's not a valuable process. It's a very valuable process. But we have very limited, like time is one of our most limited resources. Mm -hmm. And so my concern is, is that, like Craig said, when we're in the throes of the NEAS process, which is, a ve which is a very valuable process, we're not able to do a lot of the other things that are critically important to, the, to a district that, um, you know, kind of move the district forward. Not to say that the NEAS process doesn't, it doesn't have value. <coughs> mm -hmm. I, we just believe that, I think, moving away from it at the K level <coughs> I think at this point is maybe a better decision for the okay, for Thank us. you. Thank you. Um, you know, Scott, I think you asked why would it be valuable at one point and maybe not so much now. And one of the things I was thinking as you asked that is um, with the mass curriculum frameworks that are based on the Common Core, 
um, with the number of expectations and standards that are so consistent now and consistently expected mm -hmm. in all schools in Massachusetts, I think that you know, back 20 years ago, schools had a lot more flexibility mm -hmm. and a lot less oversight in terms of what we were doing. And now, I mean, the standards are very clear. The expectations are, um, I, I think that everyone knows what direction you have to be moving in. And I think it is true, you know, when we just got, I don't know how many reports dumped on us from the MCAS. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> when I think about NEASC, as valuable as it is, it is a lot of teacher time and in our profession where we have very hard-working people but we are bound by a union contract and that's just the plain truth you can't say to people we're going to work on this project of collecting this information from three to five or over the summer because it doesn't work that way and so our limited time when we're asking people to reevaluate their curriculum to interpret data I, I do strongly think that that work and making sure that we're doing the just right work for students, um, I think that is more valuable. I think the other unique thing about Milford is we, we offer a lot of opportunities for community input, and we have a lot of forums for people to give their thoughts. We have very active school councils, <coughs> school improvement councils. We have a very active and involved school committee. So I think when we're looking for people to give input on how can we improve, what, what's lacking, well, even the Chromebooks I think is a, a great example. Um, of work that are spent with a lot of community involvement and we have a lot of smart people in this community who have given a lot of great feedback mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to mention about NIASC I think there's a cost associated mm -hmm. with it there is Kathy you know what that is um, not that it should be the only reason but it does come with a very significant cost um, to uh, when the last time NIASC came in for Stacy it's a two-year cycle and the first year and that was probably what four years ago was that the cycle that we were in? So it's going to be more expensive, but back then it was 30000 in the first year and about 40000 in year two. The high school uh, for the two years is typically about forty in the first year and fifty in the uh, second, but that definitely has a strong value. And I do agree that the preschool and the high school are two areas where I would never walk away from the accreditation it's so critical um, and at the preschool we can't because we wouldn't get license so it's, yeah so so yeah. they have it so I, so yeah. I you know certainly understand from a core <coughs> from a core feedback piece so I guess from a core curriculum perspective I guess my really kind of two things Jen and I think you I think you put it very well which is you know time is at a premium right? mm -hmm. there's no question time is at a premium um, classroom time face time with students <laughs> Uh, professional development time to your point you know because we are bound from you know there we're bound with you know contracts as far as and we can't stay till you know three to five I guess but I guess I would kind of say two, there's a few things I would have and just sort of questions to put out there which is one um, as you said Kevin this is very valuable feedback and it's peer feedback I, I do think getting the community involvement I think is continuously going to be important um, how will how will you look to replace that the value of that feedback from a peer perspective to be able to continue to move the district forward? That's that's one. Two, I think from a time perspective, um, I, I think that quite frankly is a mirror moment for us. Um, we're the ones who negotiate that contract. Um, we're the ones who that now. It's not a one-sided opportunity, right? It's not just us saying this is the way we want life to be. It, it is a true negotiation, and we've had a very good relationship with the Milford <coughs> Association. Um, but I think that's really on us. If we're not giving the teachers the opportunity and the time that they need to be successful in their roles, I think having going at it from that perspective as we get it ready to prepare and gear up for our next round of teacher, teacher contract negotiations, that's on us. We, we need to make sure that we're going in with those asks and there's some things as we know anytime you go through a teacher, anytime you go through any contract negotiation, there are items that are up for debate and conversation and there are items that are not. And, and ultimately us, uh, we as a board have to make that decision and as we go through that negotiation. Lastly, I would just say to your point around the cost perspective, um, <coughs> what I would ask is is that if, if this is the direction we'll ultimately needs to be getting, uh, the, ultimately the direction Kevin you as a superintendent are going to take the schools um, the question then comes down from a budget perspective of 
how are we going to utilize those funds that are currently built into our budget to move education forward? And because it's to your point, Kathy, these are not these are not small dollar amounts. I mean, we're talking about just between the middle school and the high school as well. I mean, you're talking about seventy thousand in year one and and ninety thousand in year two. That doesn't even include the elementary schools, which could be cost as well. Mm -hmm. So you're, we're talking about, you know, the high school alone is a teacher salary in year two. In year one, it's three teaching assistants, um, just between the uh, at the middle school. So it's it's a significant amount of money that the t that the taxpayers in Milford have dedicated oh. towards that, and we have allocated as well. So I would say that we need to make sure that when we are talking about this, we do one of two things: we either allocate the resources for bettering the school district, being very focused and very deliberate about that, making sure that we do give that resource to that point of time. Can't buy time, unfortunately, but what you can do is, is use it in other resources to help give some, take some things off the plate, Kevin, to your point. Um, and then the last piece is, is, you know, and if not, then we give it back to taxpayers. It's as simple as that. Yep. Now, I would tell you I have my own personal opinion as which, which way I think we should go. And I'll be happy to share that, and that is, I think it should be, I think it should be dedicated to the students and the teachers. I, 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 I'm confident that we can find ways to be able to continue to use this money to help move our education forward. I, I think that's the important way to do it, but I think we've got to be clear, and there needs to be a plan that goes along with it. It can't just, we can't exit something, have a significant difference in budget, <coughs> and not be able to account for, well, how did we use this money to reallocate to move the education forward for our students and, and help our teachers? Any other questions or comments? Um, so, what's what's the cycle for each individual school? Is every it's six a, it's years? A, no, it's a ten-year so cycle. Ten years. We're heading into. I know Stacy's heading into the self-study. What's what's it called? They're doing self-study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is the kind of the mid mid. No. No self-study is they're they're gearing up because um, we're expecting a visit in next year, I think. So. That's why this is important because they're about to put a lot of manpower into this and a lot of hours into this. Um, so, yeah, and, and and if we decided not to move forward with this, it's nothing. There's nothing that would prevent us from doing it two years down the road or three years down the road. If we felt that peer review was important at a certain school, we could always do it. We at could any, absolutely any time jump back in. Right. I'm, I'm certain of that. Is is this requiring a vote from and support from the school committee, or is this just an update you're providing? This is really an, more of an update. I don't think it does require a vote. Okay. And, and I guess my, my last ask would just be is, is that as you go forward with things like this, if you're looking to take things off the plate, looking knowing that there's a budget impact and everything like that, my ask of you, Kevin, as the superintendent of schools is you come in with a proposal of, hey, here's a change I'd like to make. By the way, here are the assets that are associated with that, whether it's manpower, hours, time, or actual dollars and cents. Here is my plan for what I'm going to replace it with or what I'm going to do with that difference in time, difference in feedback, difference in assets. Mm -hmm. and just to clarify, that's not a balance that's in our budget today, right? right. So, no, no, so, I got so that. If we want to go into the budget process that. for next year, we would, there would be a line item for the yes. NEAS accreditation. Yep. So the money's not there. No, no, I got it. Today. Yep. Yeah. It actually, there is a balance in the budget as it stands because the manpower for oh. Stacy. It's That's built in. in our budget right now. The allocation is there. I believe it's thirty thousand. Okay, for this okay. this past in this, year. Yes. Okay. So we knew we had this last year, and it is in our budget. And when you say manpower, so we're paying teachers additional time. Time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I just add one more thing? Uh, one thing that you know, Kevin, you presented the strategic plan, mm -hmm. or at least the, the beginnings yep. of it. And when I was thinking about that, I think I would far prefer to see our teachers working on the things that are highlighted in that. So making sure we have enough support with the social emotional learning, making sure that we have the right materials and professional development for curriculum. So I'm hopeful that maybe we can look at our strategic plan, which I do think a lot of thought went into as kind of the direction that if, if there is money and there is time, which clearly never enough of either, um, I would hope that we would use our strategic plan to guide um, our work moving, moving forward. I mean, that's the point of the strategic plan. And I think we have some really important, critical, I think the social-emotional piece is really critical and that curriculum alignment and making sure we're teaching what we should be and that teachers have what they need to do that, the resources yeah. and the training. Um, I, I'm, I'm personally really happy we're going in that direction because I think our direction is good. And um, 
I think the, the time the teachers spend is, is going to be far more valuable to our students and our growth. Is, is all the NEASC work done after hours? It's both, actually. There's, um, there's, a, there's a few different kind of levels of committees that happen. There's some things that all the faculty participate in. There's some things that there's, um, there's different groups that work on different standards. And then there's almost like an executive committee. They call it, there's a different title for it. Yeah that does a lot of like the writing and synthesizing of the documents. Um, and I think, you know, all that kind of plays into like, like say we have a half day. When the high school um, last year went through the um, accreditation, or was it the year before? <coughs> when the high school just went through the accreditation process, basically every time we had a half day mm -hmm. or a professional day or, mm -hmm. um, you know, our monthly meetings with faculty, all that time is directed towards the NEAS process. Okay. And that doesn't change whether you're at the elementary or middle school level. So what this really does in effect is it allows kind of what Jen was saying to really have us focus on the strategic plans and the district improvement plans that are aligned to the strategic plan during those times. Yeah. And, and, and the stuff that happens during the school day, are, are teachers being pulled out of classrooms to work on the ask? Um, I wouldn't say they're being pulled out of classrooms. Maybe right before the visit, sometimes okay. like the executive, like the that executive group would be doing that. But generally, I don't think teachers are being pulled out of classrooms. But they are spending all the professional time kind of focused on the NEAS process because there's 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 surveys that go out. There's there's a lot of like there's a lot of like writing and iteration and rewriting that goes through it. And again, it's a valuable process. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like where we are right now. A better use of our time at the K-8 level would be to, you know, focus more on what we've outlined in the strategic, the four strategic focus areas, and the, dis the, the school improvement plan, which are aligned to that. Okay. You know, I just thought of something. Um, what has changed in, since we embarked on this years ago? Um, previously, there were three Tuesdays, three-hour meetings that teachers had. Now there's one. So the time that 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 principals have with staff and that staff are after school is is limited and it's more valuable now than it was back then um, meaning you could still have a faculty meeting and then work on NEASC on the other two the other two weeks now it's it's this or nothing <coughs> so I don't know. And, and Scott made a great point about time and literally looking at that when we head into the next contract yep. negotiations yep. Yep. Uh, and I assume you've had discussions with administrators and teachers mm -hmm. about moving away from the ask and you've gotten their support. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so, th so there's no vote required no, here, but, but it would certainly be a topic of conversation come budget season and um, during the contract negotiation. And then we'll also have a plan for what we do with the uh, money that was allotted to the ask this year too, that mm -hmm. we move back to the committee. Right. And that will require a vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, so Craig Early Literacy Grant. Exciting news. Um, <laughs> thank you. You call him Craig the Rainmaker. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we wrote a grant actually for, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember the numbers, like $97,000 for an early literacy grant. Um, we were awarded $74,000 of that. And uh, just to back up, what that was is it's for Brookside and Memorial. We identified four teachers at each, each school and uh, the building principal, so Lisa Burns and Seth Wood and four of their teachers to participate in this program. And what happens in this program is, is the, four, the five members of the team have to participate in three statewide literacy institutes. Um, they have to participate in three full day regional meetings and three after school regional meetings. They have to commit to supporting the implementation of the lessons designed by the school team as required by the grant. That's the, that's the step one of it. We applied for the group two of it, which is the most exciting part. Uh, the group two is we are afforded, um, they have to commit to, they have to use the screener that the DESE um, identifies and they have to commit to using it. But then they get a data specialist, 400 hours of a data specialist to come out from the, the DESE and work directly with the teachers on how to analyze the data and then actually coach them in, into putting the practices in place that'll help them um, after they identified all the different weaknesses. 
Um, the other thing that they have to do is commit to establishing a vertical professional learning community comprised of, of at least this group of teachers, and if they can get more teachers involved, great. Um, and then one cross-site visit, <coughs> either between the two schools or they go somewhere else, some other participating building. So it's really something that we've been trying to put in place uh, for the last few years is, is getting somebody that's a real data analysis um, who can really look at the data with the teachers and help them try to make sense of it all. Uh, and then also provide them with some coaching and, and feedback. So it, it really is exciting. I don't know if anybody has questions. Yeah, any questions or comments for Craig? That's great. Oh, good. It's great news. Nice work. Right, right. so looking forward to seeing the results. Did Thank you write you. that grant? What's that? Did you write that grant? We co wrote it nice. with Lisa and Seth. So. Very nice. Good job. Um, Kathy? Uh, I have for the committee's um, approval this evening uh, warrant. The first warrant is in the amount of $8,473.20. Motion to approve. Motion from Scott. Seconded by Mike. <coughs> All in favor? The second warrant is in the amount of $215,585.13. Motion. Motion from John. Seconded by Scott. All in favor? The third warrant is in the amount of $25,066.04. Motion from Jim, seconded by Joe. All in favor? The next warrant is in the amount of $218,343.08. Motion from Jen, seconded by Jim. All in favor? The next warrant is in the amount of 200, I'm sorry, $2,198.76. Motion from Joe, seconded by Mike. All in favor? The next warrant is in the amount of $24,051.02. Motion from Scott, seconded by John. All in favor? The next warrant is in the amount of $23,842.15. Motion from Jim, seconded by Jen. All in favor? And the last warrant is in the amount of $195,339. Motion from John, seconded by Joe. All in favor? Uh, the committee also has a list of the latest appointments from our previous meeting, and there is a 2018 budget update. Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. <coughs> All right, subcommittee update. Well, I believe the only subcommittee that met since the last meeting was wellness. Uh, do we have an update from the wellness subcommittee? Who's on the wellness committee? <laughs> oh, I, I, did I did not make it. I did not make it. You didn't make it, uh, Jim. I was on it. Yeah, I'm on it with Joe, and uh, I do have an update. <laughs> uh, just a few things I want to cover. Just uh, keep it brief. The summer uh, feeding program sponsored by the Hockamock YMCA. Um, just wanted to recognize that they did serve uh, 9,516 meals this summer. Um, snacks will also be served at the Milford Youth Center and funded through the Hockamock YCA, uh, YMCA. Uh, Carla will also be meeting with uh, MHS, MHS graduate Josh Trotwine regarding a fresh truck project, which will bring fresh produce uh, to low-income neighborhoods. Um, Carla also did observe the flex times uh, around lunches at Woodland, and um, Nancy is actually sending out um, parent letters now to students who may be eligible for uh, free breakfasts. Uh, the other large takeaway from the meeting um, was around the SEL component, um, and it was, uh, it, it was basically around um, impact numbers, uh, SEL percentages as they relate to school nursing visits are up around 80%. Um, which is a <coughs> fairly high number. Um, so, you know, in layman's terms, 80% of all nursing visits are social emotionally related. So. And Jim, we merged those two. Yeah, so it's SEL, SEL and wellness. And wellness. Yeah, okay. so that's why I threw in the <coughs> yeah. SEL Perfect. component. So. Any questions for Jim? Jim? No. I have minutes as well, so if uh, anybody would like them, I can email them to him after the meeting. All right. Thanks, Jim. Uh, future agenda items. Do we have any future agenda items? Um, just for, <coughs> excuse me, uh, just something for the 
um, for us to review I, whether it's in uh, policy, whether it's within the policy committee as well. Um, I, I guess it really just kind of comes down. There's been a couple of um, things I just want to make sure that we kind of talk about as a committee. So there's been, it kind of comes down from a communication of how do we, how do we expect and how do we certainly disseminate communication from administration to the school committee. Um, there's been two staff student related issues in the last two weeks that have come about. Um, where there's been limited and or zero communication. We've not been made aware of it. I've gotten phone calls either I can go to Target and get the information or I can get it from administration. I'm hoping that we would get it from administration. So I'm not sure if we need to create a policy for that or if it, it, I guess I'm, I'm looking for some feedback of what direction do we need to give to make sure the communication is timely and informative so that, that way we're able to respond when approached when that comes through. And I think we owe that from a direction perspective to, to Kevin as well as to the administration. Yeah, let's, um, wh why don't you review that in the po at the policy subcommittee level? I, I, I think there is some language today, yes. or maybe it's in the protocol, um, but let's, let's take a look, look at that and just dust it off. Okay. Thank you. Right, any other future agenda items? All right. Um, any old business? business. Uh, we do have an executive session tonight uh, to discuss a grievance with the MTA and there's also um, a discussion around a side letter to the, the contract as mm -hmm. well. Um, so we will need a roll call to go into executive session and we will not be returning uh, from executive session. So we'll start over here. Yes. 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 All right, so going into executive session, we need a motion to adjourn. Motion from Scott, seconded by John. All in favor? All right, thank you. Have a good night.